Hi, this is Cassidy Yard with Maximo TV, and I am here with Jean Farber, who right. stars in the brand new film, One Under the Sun. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very good. Uh, first of all, just tell us where you're from originally. Uh, I'm originally from Belarus. Minsk. Belarus, you mean? Right, or Belarus. Uh, no, <laughs> it's all right. It's, uh, it's Belarus, and it used to be part of the Soviet Union. Okay, so how long did you live there before you moved to the U.S.? I came here uh, when I was 11, right when the wall came down, right when the Soviet Union fell apart is when I came to the States. So you come at 11. What age do you book your first oh acting role? Lord. Well, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. So I went to uh, high school for the performing arts first, then I went to Boston University. Which one? Uh, LaGuardia. Wait, the LaGuardia one? I was going to say, because I was like, yeah. there's one that I know of, but LaGuardia, maybe you yeah. went to one in Jersey. I don't know. No, no, no. Yeah, LaGuardia. That's a huge deal. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, and then I got a, uh, almost a full ride to Boston University, went and got my BFA uh, from there. And then when I got out, that's when I started booking work. So um, did you become a Russian with a Boston accent? Uh, no, I did not. I tried my hardest. I, I, I try to lose my Russian accent and become sort of a generic American. Um, uh, but yeah. When you were at LaGuardia, was there anybody that was also in your class or at school you were that we would know now as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you would know a few of them. Um, uh, Morena Bakarin, uh, okay. used to, was, uh, uh, if you know who she is, she is the, uh, 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 she was the, uh, the love interest in Deadpool. Oh, she's amazing. Right. She was also in Homeland. So She's uh, incredible. I love mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're in good company. Okay, anyone yeah, else? Sure, think sure. Uh, who else can I think of? Um, Khalees, the, uh, the rapper Khalees. What? You guys had like My the best graduating class ever. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was a fun class. Okay, so you after that, like right after school, is that when you first started going into the industry professionally? Yeah, uh, right after I was lucky enough to start booking. Um, I did a lot of theater. Uh, stuff in New York regionally, and then I started uh, getting all this TV work in uh, in uh, New York. Now, take us, okay, from the TV work, how does it even happen to land into X-Men and Captain America? Yeah. Those movies, I imagine the casting process is very long, and there's a lot of elements that go into it. What was it like when you first went into audition and you're doing something for Marvel? Right, uh, good question. Uh, well, look, it takes it takes a while to get to that point, right? I mean, it's you have to kind of get a, a sort of a name, and, and then uh, the casting directors know you, and then they bring you in. And I remember I, I auditioned for three or four projects. I think I, uh, Ant-Man was one of them I auditioned for, and I met the director, uh, and uh, uh, a lot of Marvel f uh, projects. And I just wasn't, just wasn't totally right for them, you know, um, for whatever reason. But the casting director really had a, a very supportive of, of my work and brought me in every time. So when the, right, when the right role came up, which was Captain America Civil War, I played Karpov, uh, it was like a shoe-in. You know, I went in there, did it, and left, and. Uh, heard fairly quickly that I got it, um, so it's a, it's a process. And I, I, my advice to actors is that you know just because you don't book one role doesn't mean that that one not booking is not going to lead you to more roles. What that means is that you make a uh, you leave a, a great impression on the casting director, and they're going to remember you and bring you back and bring you back and bring you back. And I'm so happy and glad and fortunate that I did not book those roles, that I did not book a, a role in Ant Man, because if I did, then I wouldn't be able to do Captain America. Right, mm -hmm. and that role, this role that I played, is much bigger than one in Ant Man. So right. in retrospect, it all worked out much better. Okay, so I've never seen Captain America, yeah, okay. so I'm not quite as familiar with your role. I know yeah. you're like a bad guy, very mysterious. Um, is there anybody, like anything you can tell us about your role, uh, like any sure. scenes that you had with people from it that were like yeah. definitely stand out? So when I watch it, mm -hmm. I can be like, I know that guy. Well, uh, now the movie's out, I can say some things. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty much the first thing you see in the film, uh, what? so don't be late. Uh, I uh, uh, and I'm. I don't hope I don't sound pompous when I say this, but if it wasn't for my character, there would be no um, film, so to speak. I mean, there wouldn't be the story. I'm the one that actually is responsible for um, brainwashing of one of the characters, and that would. You say which character? Yeah, uh, the Winter Soldier, uh, 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 Bucky Barnes. So that leads to the conflict and the and the civil war between um, allies. So what does it mean for you f to be on such a big budget studio film? What was it about this project that made you say yes? Well, uh, it's Captain America Civil War. Who would say no? Um, it's, uh, it, was, it was amazing to work on it. It, it. It's always the level of professionalism is outstanding. You know, We shot a lot of it in, in Georgia and Atlanta, and we shot some of it here. Um, and um, 
everyone was down to earth everyone was accommodating everyone was just incredible to work with from chris evans down to you know down to the pa guy mm -hmm. i mean it was just professionalism now with one under the sun i think what's really interesting about it is that puja even said this she said the characters and roles in it were not the stereotypes like for her you know to be indian it was not about playing a stereotypical indian role she was an astronaut and i know that the director said that they really liked you in this role because you didn't just play a stereotypical russian bad guy which we see in projects Tell us about what it meant to kind of like break down that barrier and just you play a dad in this movie. In this one. Yeah. Uh, well, in, the, in this one, I'm not Russian. I'm, I play uh, John right. Voss, I'm, you know, American. Look, I mean, one of the reasons that I was drawn to this story in, in this film um, personally mm -hmm. is because for me, it was about the love that a father has for his daughter and his family and, and the need to keep that unit together. Right, and um, what happens in the film, I hope I'm not ruining it, is uh, Ava's character uh, is dying uh, of cancer. She's terminally ill, and my wife, Pooja's character, um, is an astronaut, and she goes to Mars, and thus leaving um, us to kind of fend for ourselves, right? Uh, and so that's what drew me to the film, is the love that I would have for my daughter, because I have a daughter. Right. So that really, to explore that love was something that was very interesting, and it was written really, very well, and um, so yeah. So since you have a daughter yourself, I uh -huh. feel like moms and dads parent so differently. Are you the dad that's sort of like, let's go to Disneyland for the day, like let's do this? Or are you more like the strict, like tell me how, how it is with you oh, being man. a dad in real life? Good question. Um, well, it, it, it depends. I I, uh, I think my wife is the one that's more of a, let's go to Disneyland today. Let's go and, uh, and pick up and go camping for the weekend. I'm, I'm a little more um, pragmatic. Say, a you want to relax at the house, plan everything. Yeah, yeah, not plan everything, but I just want to, you know, be able to plan things. Yeah. You know. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And with this, I think it's really. Uh, when you first watch the film, I mean, it doesn't really give much away. It literally starts with like the years 2020 after political unrest. I mean, I'm watching this and I'm feeling as if there's some parallels to what is going on Absolutely. right now in our country. So for it to be a project that has a social commentary, what does that mean to you? It means so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's immediate. It's what's happening right now. I mean, people relate to it, uh, to what's happening in our world today. So 2020 is not that far away. It's only four years away. And that's what I think attracted um, a lot of people to this film and why it's so um, it's getting such a following is because it's, we can see this developing in four years. Mm -hmm. We really can see, look, Mission to Mars, it's already in the works. You know, with SpaceX and, and NASA, it's already, we're already going to Jupiter. So that's what people are, are um, getting out of this is that, wow, this is, this is what it might be like in four years. And going along with that, it's yeah. literally all over the internet, so I'm just going to say it really quickly. It is a review, and the review says, An edge of your seat mystery thriller, One Under the Sun, brings audiences on an emotional journey and challenges their notions of war. Please tell us who gave this review. Stan Lee. Stan Lee! Wow. Does that give you goosebumps? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, it really... You know, God himself, God of Marvel, <clears throat> likes the film that uh, we did. How cool is that, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, there's no words. It's, it's the highest compliment anyone can really get. What is the fan base of these projects? I mean, really when you work on something with Marvel and now, you know, especially, I, I feel like movies that Vincent has done in the past, especially with Batgirl, mm -hmm. it's really garnered this cult audience of people that are dedicated and interested and lively on the message boards. Like, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means so much. Look, Marvel fans uh, are so loyal. I mean, they're just, you know, they're there all the time. They're so involved. They know everything about the characters, everything about the universe. And to have that fan base, that loyal fan base, follow our little film mm -hmm. is just, is the biggest compliment that anyone can get. And I, I love it. Thank you so much. I love that. Yeah. Is there anything else that we should know or you want to tell people about seeing the film? Uh, no, just go see it. Yeah, go see it. I think you'll like it. It was so lovely to meet with you. Thank you for Absolutely. such a great interview, you know, kind of your backstory and moving forward. Is there anything else we can expect that you're going to be in that uh, you can talk about? Well, I mean, I'm always doing things. You can check me out on IMDb or my Instagram, Gene Farber. So Who taught you about Instagram? Oh, Eva Contrell. Uh, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's just check out what I'm, I'm always doing something. Okay, amazing. Well, so lovely to meet you and everybody go see One Under the Sun. Thank you guys so much. This is Cassidy Guard with Maximo TV.